so we completed, I think the last program was electricity bill generation. So I'll start off with the next set of programs. So we finished off for loops and we have to move on to while loop. But before that, in for loop itself, we have a concept called as nested loops. So this nested loops is kind of an important concept. So you can try different patterns. It's purely up to you, but just understand the logic behind the nested loop so that you can uh, use it. Mainly this is used for two types of programs. One we call it as pattern generation programs. The other one is going to be your summation of series questions. So we will do both the models, a few questions on both the models. So if you talk about pattern generation, it's actually much more easier than it looks like. So let's say we have to generate a pattern, like a simple pattern, like this star, star, star. You have a star, star, star. It keeps on going, right? So it can be achieved using two for loops only. So let's say you have a four. You have to fix the number of columns for I in range. Let's take the number of rows from the user or we can fix it at five. And then you can see that the number of first row has one star, second row has two stars. So J will always denote the number of columns. So for J in range, it has to stop at I. So rather I can say, because it starts from zero here, I can say I plus one. I have to just say print star, print whatever I want. So I say print star. But now it will print everything. And once the complete row is done, I have to print in the next line. So at this line, I will just say print. So this four lines will take care of any pattern for you. But you just have to keep on varying it. For example, I say for I in range 5. It Remember, I it determines the number of rows. And then for J in range i plus 1. Do not by heart a program. You keep on changing and seeing. That's the fun here. You have to give different stop values and see like which works for you best. So print star. An empty print statement. So let's run this. I think today is May 15th and let's take this as our program one. Okay, so I gave a print there, but I did not give a print star comma. I have to say the end is equal to space alone, right? So I forgot that. So it's printing in next, next lines. Let's run this once again. Yes, so I have got the pattern that I want. Now, now you can think of varying it. Like when I say, when I start from, if I want five first and then it has to keep on reducing, that also can be achieved by this. Or instead of printing a star, if I want to print one, two, three, right? If I want to print one, the row number or the column number, you have to decide on that. Let's say if I print J, then what happens? Right, it starts from zero. No, I don't want a zero, I want a one. So I can change it now. I can just go to this place and I can just say one comma six, right? Because I want five rows. So now this also will start from one comma I plus one. You can see one, one, two, one, two, three. Now I want the row number instead. I can change this G to I. Now after printing, I, I want to print a separator there. I can also do that. I can also print, let's say at Right, one at two at at. So maybe the spacing you can adjust, you can give end is equal to a little more extra space. You can give a tab space, you can do whatever you want. So this is regarding your first set of all the programs. Here you can generate any number of patterns that you want. You can print in reverse. You can just try the different combinations of for loop for your programs. So second set of programs would be summation of series. So summation of series is something like I have a one plus, we have sine and cosine series in max, like I'm not going to go to the details of that. So I have some series like this. 
then i can have another series where i can just change the sign each of them have a name right i don't remember the names you have a sign series cosine series you have a taylor series so there are a lot of series each one has a proper name but i'm just giving you some examples here so then i have i can also do So however complex the question is, just try to understand one small pattern. Let's say the last term here is x power n. Here also it's x power n. Here it should go, it's going to be x power n by n factorial. In your for loop, just replace your n by i. So let's say, I say for i in range 1 comma n, or in this case, you can take this as x power 0. So you can initially say, sum is equal to 1 here because we can see that for everywhere it is only 1 or you can say sum is equal to 0 and start from 0 itself because 1 we know is x power 0 so you can see that it is we need a power of x comma i that's all every time it has to be x power the i, I iteration and it has to be added to itself so sum is equal to 0 initially and you have to go till n so let me put as the n plus 1 here sum is equal to sum plus i sorry sum plus i have to do power of x comma i so this is the logic that i want for this program now what happens there is a small change in the next pattern there is a negative sign there so first time if the power is a odd power you're going to subtract it if the power is an even power you're going to add it so maybe you can have a if condition there we will do that case and you can see the last case it's like nothing but the same thing except that you have a factorial here there is no i don't think there is a math dot factorial still i have to check that but if it is not there you always know the factorial program you can use it for um, calling this function so let's come back to one program it's the same kind of a for loop. It's not actually a nested loop, but it kind of maybe it requires a nested loop when you use the factorial or something else. So let's start for, let's initialize. Let's get the value of x and i, uh, x and dn from the user. So we'll say x is equal to int input enter x. This is for us to check if we are getting the correct cosine value or sine value. And then n is equal to int input, enter n. And uh, now we'll start with our logic for i in range. We can start with 0, then I can just say n plus 1 because my last value is n. I have to stop before, just I should include n also. So for i in range n, you can write your function. So let's say sum is equal to sum plus power of. So if I have to use the power function, I have to import math. So let me import math function here. Math dot power, it's automatically giving you x comma y. So it's going to be what power what. In this case, also it is going to be x comma, the power is going to be i. So once this is done, every time it is going to add and finally sum will have the final answer. So I can just say print sum. So let's run this. Take an easy value for x so that we can check it. So let me enter a value for x, let's say 2. So x is 2 and uh, let me say I have two terms. So I think it's correct, right? Because n is 2. So I have to say 1 plus 2 plus 2 square, which is 1 plus 2 plus 4, which is correct. It is 7. It has given me the correct answer. 
So I can also go back. And as I said, if I want to change a positive and negative sign, I can check it here. I can say if I figure out your own logic. If I mod 2 is equal to 0, it means it's an even number. So even it's going to be plus. And then let me take an else. Which means it's an odd power. I is odd. So it is going to be the same statement. But instead of plus, it is going to be minus. So we'll do the same thing. I'll have x as 2 and 2 terms. This is also correct because 1 minus 4, 1 minus 2 plus 4. Correct? 1 minus 2 plus 4 will me give me 3. It is also correct. So now we'll move on to while loops. So while loops, there are a lot of standard programs that we have to learn, but the major program that we have to know definitely is how to do, there are a set of programs which have the same logic. You have sum of digits, Armstrong number, palindrome, reversing a number. So all these uh, predominantly use while loops. So let's first start with a simple logic behind that. Let me first do the sum of digits of a number. Let's say if I have to type 1, 2, 3, I have to get the answer as 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6, right? So this should be my answer. So how do I achieve that? So the logic is going to be very simple as you do max here. So first is I have to do a 123. I have to get the last digit first. So I have to do a modulo 10. Whenever I divide a number by 10, I will be getting the reminder. So I know that I'll be getting 3. Now I have to add 3. So sum is equal to already it should be 0 plus 3. Now next step when I go again, this number has to be divided by 10. In this case, remember, we have to do this division. I want only the quotient. I want to remove this 3 once and for all. Now, again, I have to repeat the same step. 12 modulo 10 will give me 2. So I'm going to add 2 here. Same step, repeat again. 12 slash 10 is going to give me a 1. Now, 1 modulo 10 is going to give me a 1. So I get 6 as my sum. I got my result, but I have to stop, right? So when will I stop? When I divide this, it gives me a 0 as the quotient. I have to stop here. So this is the logic for sum of digits. It's not only for sum of digits. A lot of programs use this logic. So we'll do it one by one. Let's take... So let's get the, this program will work for any number of digits. That's why otherwise it's very easy. You can ask the user, like when I used to teach my students, used to say, ma'am, why so much trouble, ma'am? You can ask the user to enter digit by digit. So that's not the entire idea, right? The idea is to learn the use of while loop. So n is equal to int input. Enter a number. So you got the number now. Let's uh, store this number somewhere. Uh, for this program, it, no, it might not be required, but still, as a habit, let's save this. So let's say x is equal to n. I have stored this number. Now I'm going to start with sum is equal to 0. Initially, the sum is 0. right? Then I have a while. As long as n is greater than 0, not even equal to, or when I can even check if n is not equal to 0, I'm going to start with this. I have only three steps always. Let's say a is equal to n modulo 10. I got the reminder now. I'm going to say sum is equal to sum plus a. Always add it here. And then I'm going to say n is equal to n double slash 10. So once I do these three steps, it's going to make sure that these three steps are repeated again and again till finally I get the sum of the digits. So once I come out, I can just print. Print sum of digits of x, right? Now n has become 0, so I can't use n here. Is equal to sum. So let's check this with... Let's say sum of digits. So I'll give the same example. It's giving me the correct answer as 6. And try this. It will work perfectly for any logic. So I'll copy the same program for another 
it's a very very similar program wherein now we did the sum of digits there is something called as an armstrong number so armstrong number is defined as when the sum of the digits of the number is equal to the, the sum of the cubes of the digits is equal to the number itself for example 153 is one such armstrong number so when i say instead of saying adding just the number I'm going to add the cube of it. I'm just doing star pi. I can also use a power function here. But I don't want to use a power function. I just multiply a into a into a and I add it to the... Now, after finishing this, I want to check if x is equal to equal to sum. What does it mean? The number is equal to the sum of its cubes. So if this is true, then I have to print it as an Armstrong number. Else, I can just say it is not an Armstrong number. Slowly, you can also use this to do a nested here also by generating all possible Armstrong numbers. That is also one of the programs that you can always try. So I know that 153 is an Armstrong number. So I have given that number. We'll do it for something else. It is not an Armstrong number, right? So the logic, these are certain standard programs that are very important for you to learn. So you have to know these things, right? So So the next similar program is a palindrome. We are going to check if a given number is a palindrome number. And in, in between, it also can be used for reversing a number. So you can just check if enter a number and do the same logic. I'm just using the same base program of sum of digits here. Now, for reversing, there is a, something a slightly changed. We have done this in, I think, eight standard linear equations. To reverse a number, you have to multiply the place by 10 and keep on moving it so that you can move it to tens place, hundreds place, and finally to whichever place it needs so that it will become the reversed number. So we are going to use kind of the same logic here for checking if it's a palindrome. So we are going to ch ch not change anywhere except that we will have, let's change the sum though it's misleading to reverse. And I'm going to just say, I'm going to push the number. So reverse is equal to reverse into 10. I'm moving it by, to the one by one place plus a. I don't think that anything else has to change. First thing we will just check if it is printing my reversed number and then we will go on to check if it's a palindrome. So I'm putting 1, 2, 3. It's giving me 3, 2, 1. So if you look at it, it's just a half a second work of changing the particular line once you know the sum of the digits and how the modulus and double slash works it's going to be very easy for you now it's now it's easy you can just check if x is equal to equal to reverse it's a palindrome or it is not a palindrome so it's easy to print that also so these are your standard programs and uh, i will also be uploading uh, once this, this is done i will be uploading this uh, a PDF kind of all the possible programs using uh, control structures. Once this lesson is kind of done, you have conditional and constructs and uh, looping. I think these are the maximum programs that you can get. So other than this, there is an LCM HCF programs and they can ask you something like decimal to binary conversion. And those are some programs which you can definitely code is available in the net, right? So it's only for you, for me to give you an idea on how a for loop and a while loop works. And these are some very basic programs which will definitely be there in your record. It is there in the syllabus also. So these programs you should definitely know if at all you are saying that you have finished this lesson. So I think this is chapter number nine in your Sumita Arora book of grade 11. And these are the practical portions. Till this, the practical portions will be over. There could be much more complex patterns depending on how your teachers are going to teach you. They could give you some complex patterns to generate summation of series. They can give you some tough pass summation of series to do. So whatever or your any other extra program which you are finding it difficult to understand, you can always message me in the comments. I will try to solve it for you. So we will move on to the next topic in the next video. With um, We will start with strings and we will proceed with that. See you then. Bye-bye.